um, the government of Gaza, you hear Rafah, you hear Khan Yunus, lots of cities. But we really don't know where are located and what is the importance of each of these cities. So my lecture will be quick, it's all maps, to get more insight of, of Gaza City and Gaza as a whole, Gaza Strip, from a historical point of view. But before I start, I was thinking during the last two years, as a Muslim, um, we always, once there is like an attack on Gaza or West Bank or GE or every, every year, there's something like this. We all start to listen to Mashayikh in Khutab in Jum'ah, or we read about it, we educate our kids temporarily about Palestine and the importance of Palestine, the importance of Holy Land in the Quran and the Sunnah. We all know the virtue of it, right? Closer? Oh, okay. We all know as Muslims about the virtue of the Holy Land, Palestine, Jerusalem. We read it in the Quran, we read it in Surah Al-Isra, in many surahs. And also we, we read the hadith many a hadith about the virtue of that land and sometimes we ask okay what, what is next what, what as a Muslim should I do and we stop on this question right yes we, we probably donate we probably protest we do lots of things and they're all important they're all important but it seems that we don't have a project we don't have a long-term goals in order to liberate Palestine Quickly, um, I will just highlight uh, uh, how the Prophet وسلم, and his companions, they put that project. It's not liberated or conquered like, like that, or coincidence, no. It was years of planning, and it started when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered his Prophet and the companions to pray to our Masjid Al-Aqsa. Not to Kaaba, the first Qibla, right? And for how long? Few days? Some narration says 15 months, other narrations they, they say like 17 months. Were they happy as companions? Was the Prophet happy about this? No. Right? He wasn't happy, but it was a direction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to start to plan for that holy land to be back to Muslims because it always it's been with Muslims you know we all our prophets they're all Muslims okay so that was the start and of course it's not when Miraj came but I will tell you something the first army was sent to Bilad al-Sham it was Muqta a major battle Muqta it was like a big army of 3,000 companions. Why they went there? Probably Prophet Muhammad sent some messengers and one of them killed and he went there to... This is one reason. There are other reasons. They need to see these lands. They need to come closer. To know the language. To know the to landscape. To, 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 to start to be close to that land. Because it will be one day, we'll come, and we'll go and conquer Baytul Maqdis as Muslims. So it was a planning, right? And it was in, in al karak which is a, a, a south city of Amman in Jordan, which is around 70 kilometers from Jerusalem. It's very close, okay? And then comes Ghazwat Tabuk. Ghazwat Tabuk, very close, very close to the Bilal al-Sham in the borders, okay? And it was Ghazwat al-Usra, it was very difficult, it's like hardship of Muslims. And there is a big surah, Tawbah, talking about this. In Ghazwat Tabuk, which was in the eighth year, the Hijri calendar, there was a companion, his name is Awf ibn Malik, he came to Prophet and he asked him a few questions. And Prophet looked at him and he said, count six, before the day of judgment and the hadith narrated by Al-Bukhari okay? count six the first one my death the death of Prophet Muhammad 
The second one, Fathu Bayt al Maqdis. The conqueror of Bayt al Maqdis. It was so important. The planning started years ago. And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he made a project to the companions. You need to think about it. You need to do it one day. Close. And then Prophet Sallallahu passed away. But before he passed away, in year 11 of Hijri, like two years after Tabu, what he did? He prepared an army, the army of Usama bin Zayd. And he was youth. 18, 17 years old. Why? This is, we need to think about these things and we need to put it in perspective, trying to do like projects, trying to do some goals. Yes, individually, in mosques, and more larger, the community. Because this is what, what is done by Prophet Muhammad and his companions. So Prophet Muhammad died and the, the army was on the Al Madina. Still, he didn't go. Right? And then, of course, after Prophet's death, there were lots of tribes, Arabic tribes. They went and rejected Islam. They rejected paying zakah, they rejected salah. It was like lots of problems that they were preparing to attack al Medina. It was a serious issue around al Medina. Many big names of the companions came to Abu Bakr and he said, What are you doing? Are you sending this army? We are in a very difficult situation. And Abu Bakr alone, he was insisting to send this army. And you know the story, right? So he sent the army to Bilal al-Sham. Quickly they came back. So he did send the army as the Prophet Sallallahu ordered. Okay? Why? To know the land. Because a few years later, Abu Bakr came and he said, I'm going to send four armies to Bilad al-Sham and you know Al-Yarmouk and I just want to end with this thinking of the names of the Sahaba who went to Bilad al-Sham compared to the Sahaba who went to be Al-Iraq Iraq, Faris there is no comparison the big names of Sahaba went to Bilad al-Sham and you, you, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, I'm not saying that like uh, Al Qadisiyah is not important. You know, conquer of the whole Faris is not important. Of course, it's important. But the names, the big names: Abu Ubaidah, Shurahbil, Hisham ibn Amr, um, uh, Khalid ibn Walid. He asked Khalid ibn Walid to go from Iraq and follow the army in the Sham. Why all of this? It's the importance of a big battle, which is Al Irmuk. And soon after al Yarmouk, what happens? Abu Ubaidah, the leader, he sent Amr ibn al-As to surrender Bayt al-Maqdis. So al Yarmouk was on 15 Hijri, and the conqueror of Bayt al-Maqdis was on 16th Hijri. We need to put all of this in perspective, not just to read, of course reading, educating our kids about these is so important, but also we need to put it in perspective and plan ahead. This is my message before I start my lecture. Okay, as I started and saying, we hear lots of cities, you know, where they are. So this is about understanding Gaza map. So the content will be Gaza map before 1948, which is, we know that it's called the Nakba, where 700,000 Palestinians transferred from their cities in Palestine to go to Gaza. Many refugees in Gaza, and I'll, I'll highlight that. Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, Egypt. Lots of 700,000 refugees at that time went out after the Nakba, because of the Nakba. So I'll, I'll show you the map before that how it was, because this is really important. Gaza following an agreement called Rhodes, Rhodes Agreement in Greece, it's like an Iceland in Greece, and this is an agreement, I'll talk about it, it's 1949. Gaza's map after 1967, which is the Naksa, the second transfer, my family from Tulkarim in West Bank, and we were transferred on like deep these years to some, some of us, went to, mostly to Jordan. 
And then the demography of Gaza between 1967 and 2005. Keep this date in mind, 2005. Gaza's map under the Palestinian Authority. And then what happens on the 7th of October, which we are hearing and, and listening every day to the consequences and what is happening. Inshallah, I will highlight a few things about this. Okay. So can you see Gaza map? I think I can highlight. Oops. Muhammad, uh, can, can you see my cursor? Okay. So is it Gaza map that you know? No. It's different. So that Gaza is the original Gaza. Gaza is a big city, including Al Majd, Askalan, or Ashkelon. Now, it's with, with the, uh, uh, the, the Zionists. And Gaza itself and Khan Yunus. They are the major cities Al Majd, or Askalan, Gaza, and Khan Yunus. And it was 1,100. 11, 11 uh, kilometer, square kilometer, okay? Does that number ring a bill? Okay, keep it in mind, keep it in mind. This is very important, this is very important, okay? And that's Gaza map before 1948. All right. What happens after the Nakba, you can see the green here is the Gaza Strip that we know now. And after the Rhodes Agreement, Jordanian governments, Syria, Lebanon, all these, and, and Egypt, of course, they sat with the Israelis at that time, and they gave them Palestine. They gave them Palestine. And the West Bank, the green one, it was under the Jordanian government or Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan authority, control, and Gaza given to Egypt to control it. Okay? But all, all the uh, blue light, the state of Israel was announced on this blue, and all the red or, or pink, it was under negotiation and very soon taken by the Israeli state, and this is Jerusalem. This is Jerusalem, where it was like divided uh, between Jordan, like uh, the East Jerusalem, and West Jerusalem to the uh, um, uh, Israel. Okay, so Gaza, at this point, it is 365 square kilometer. So from 1,111, Gaza as a city, big, like uh, uh, government, let's say, it went to 365 uh, um, square, uh, uh, square kilometer. Okay, we all know the six days war between Israel, uh, uh, the armies of Iraq and Syria and Egypt defeated in six days, and Israel took the uh, Golan Heights from Syria, they got the West Bank from Jordan, and they got Gaza and all Sinai from Egypt. So we all know this. I'm not going to, to uh, uh, go deeply on this. What happens to Gaza between 1967 that of course, it's under occupation, the Israeli occupation. They went in, okay, and they started to build settlements in Gaza. You can see here the blue dots, it's settlements. So there are three settlements in the north. One big settlement, Nazarene, it is in the middle in Gaza city now, and a big group of uh, 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 settlements on the beach of Khan Yunus and Rafah. So all of this were settlements. And of course it started to be built roughly 1970s. And they made crossing point here, they call it Erez or Beit Hanun. And 
and they made a crossing to Rafah. Here, okay? So, between 1967, settlers were in Gaza, going, the army, the Israeli army, any time to attack Palestinians, they were living inside Gaza. Where, there, where some clashes started, 1970, 1987, with the Intifada. When the Intifada started, these settlers started to be, to, to be scared and went more into their settlements. However, uh, uh, with, with the whole army, anytime they can attack, you know, houses, they can take houses, they can demolish houses, they can do whatever they want during that time, until the peace process started in 1990. So the peace process started in Madrid in 1990. And there are secret channels to that peace process, which we don't know about, as anyone doesn't know about at that time. No one knows about that, what, what is happening in Oslo. Oslo were a secret negotiations between the Palestinians and the Israelis, and of course supporting by the leaders around, you know, the countries like Egypt, Jordan, and Oslo agreement, it was 1994, announced in 1994. What happens in, in after Oslo? What happens is they divided West Bank, this is the West Bank, into the three parts, A, B, and C. A is the big cities, and it is in green. In green, Jenin, that's West Bank. I'll come to Gaza. Tulkarm, where I'm from, Nablus, Ramallah, Jericho, Beit Lahm, and Hebron, Al Khalil. These cities will go to the Palestinian Authority, 100%. Okay? That's A. B, villages. This is the B, the, uh, the brown color. Villages for Palestinians. However, Israelis can go anytime, anywhere around these. So it wasn't under the Palestinian Authority 100%. And actually, Israelis can go anywhere, but they actually, what happens on the ground, they attack cities. You will hear about, like attacking Jenin many times, Nablus, etc. All the gray now, if you look from Google map, it's all settlers, settlements. That's based on an agreement no one asked us, as Muslims or as Palestinians or Arabs, to say yes. But they said yes. Okay? So they're surrounding Jerusalem. Now, with all like settlements. Right. What happens to Gaza? They said the army will, will go into the settlements and will not come out. So you remember the settlements here? So settlers will not go out of their settlements. That's the 1994 Oslo. So it's not liberation of Gaza, okay? So settlers stayed in Gaza, but they are not allowed to come out of the settlements. They were, uh, and it, it was in Netzarim actually, they were the, the governor, the Israeli governor were in Netzarim, but there was no Israeli governor anymore based on the 1994 Oslo agreement. So all settlers went in. To, in. And you know that the Intifada started in 1987 and started with the stones and you know, uh, there was a planning. There was a planning to liberate the whole Gaza. The planning started from the resistance movements, Hamas and the other. They planned to liberate Gaza completely. So they've done lots of operations against the settlements until Sharon you know Sharon? He, he died. Sharon took a very hard decision. And actually he said, I wish if I wake up one day and all Gaza Strip in the sea. <laughs> because it was a headache. 
It was a nightmare for them. Okay? What happens? He took a decision in 2005 to go out completely from Gaza. So, Gaza was completely free on this date, the 12th of September 2005. No settlers in Gaza. That's a complete liberation of Gaza done by, not by the Palestinian Authority, by the Palestinian resistance movement. Because they were doing lots of operation against the settlers. So they took a decision, we will go out of Gaza, it's not under occupation anymore since 2005. And that's why, brothers, you can see the war against Gaza, 2008, 2012, 2014, 2017, 2021, and now. Continuous, because the resistance is building there, their cells. But this is what happens. And since that time, Gaza divided into five districts or governorates. The first one is North Gaza. It's called North Gaza. North Governor or Governorate. And in North, in the North Gaza, there is big cities. You can hear it now, Beit Hanun. That's the far north. The border, we call it Beit Hanun, they call it Eris. We call it Beit Hanun, because it's a city in Gaza, Beit Hanun, here. And here, it's not mentioned here, it's Beit Lahia. Beit Lahia, lots of operations started from the sea to a, 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 a kibbutz or a, a settlement called Zikim. Zikim is here, okay, one of the settlements. Okay, so that's Beit Lahia. And Beit Lahia is like all farmers. They're very well known in strawberries. They do lots of strawberries. And we know that the, the best strawberries in Beit Lahia. And then a big city called Jabalia. Jabalia is here. And Jabalia is two parts. Jabalia the city and Jabalia the camp, a refugee camp. There's over 200,000 refugees live in Jabalia. Okay? These refugees, you know, like from 1948, they, went, they came from different cities, but mainly from big Gaza, the one I told you about. Asqalan, Majdal, Sdud, lots of cities. They came into Gaza. Okay, so this is the main cities of the north part. And I'll, I'll, I'll speak about like the population. Next slide. There was like a population of how much, how many Palestinians live there. And then the government of Gaza, which, which has the Gaza city itself. And in Gaza, there is lots of refugees camp. There is Mukhayyam al the beach camp, which is under now, under attack. I mean, all Gaza under attack. And uh, uh, there is a Shuja'iyah, there is Hayy al-Zaytun, if you hear about it. Hayy al-Zaytun, Hayy al-Tufah, okay? Lots of villages, big villages, in, in Gaza, and of course, that's what I mentioned now, Tufah, and then Shuja'iya, that's East Gaza, and also a Zaytun, Northeast. And then the, the West part is actually modernized, like very modern. All the big uh, governments, you know, um, facilities there, Hayyul Rimal, Shamari, Hayyul Rimal al Janubi, and also one spot which was really, really like totally in the ground, Tel Milhawa, which is a new city and it's a very nice city. One of my friends lived there. He's still alive, but he of course went down south because it was like heavily bombed. That's Tel Milhawa. It's very like a modern place. So this is Gaza, and then the third one is the middle area. It's called middle area, or Al-Muhafal al wusta middle area, okay? And in between Gaza as a government and the middle area, there is this river, okay? This line here is uh, Wadi Gaza, 
by the, the, the valley of Gaza. There is a, a river, and the river started from Hebron, went into the Mediterranean, Mediterranean Sea. Okay, so this is the middle area, and the middle area, there is also a refugee camp, like in Nusayrat, um, like uh, Al Braj, these all refugee camps. And a big city called Deir el Balah. Yes. This river is a big river, so they can. It's not a big river. They can drink from the water of this river? No, no, it's not a big one. And usually, if there is no water or no rain, there is like nothing. Yeah. Um, so, Deir el Balah is also a big city and it is on the beach. Deir el Balah in the middle area. And then Khan Yunus, which you probably most of us know Khan Yunus. And in Khan Yunus, there is also a refugee camp called Khan Yunus Camp, refugee camp. And then the last one, Rafah, which is on the border of Egypt. So this is the five districts, districts of Gaza. And here is like a, 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 a more in, in light on, on the camps, like this is the Jabalia camp, this is the Shatir, the Mukhayyam Shatir camp, this is al Buraj camp in the middle areas. This is the Nusayrat. This is al Maghazi. All of these bond, of course. But, uh, yeah. And this is Deir al Balah camp. This is Khan Yunus camp. Also, Rafah, there is a camp. Okay? So, this is the whole Gaza. And um, this is, sorry about this, I couldn't find like a, um, an image with a normal, uh, um, you know. Uh, like north, south. So this is like west, this is the Mediterranean Sea, and this is east, this is north, this is south. This is more of Gaza City, what is around Gaza City. So this is a Tufah, Hayy Tufah. This is Hayy Shuja'iyah. And this is Zaytun, this is Rimal, this is Tal Al Hawa, and uh, the, the Shatir the Shatir camp. Okay. And this is the Wadi Gaza I told you about. Right? So this is the population of Gaza, and you can see here like around 500,000 people live in the north district. Close to a million live in Gaza. 320,000 in the middle part, 430,000 in Khan Yunus, and 275,000. That's a population of 2 million point two, roughly 2.2 .2 million people in 360 square kilometer. It's the most dense place in the world. By the way, from north, far north, to far south, it's 40 kilometers. Imagine, only 40 kilometers. Uh, the, the widest area is from Rafah. This is 15 kilometers. And up here is around five to six kilometers. It's very, very dense area. Okay, just imagine that. In Gaza, there is two main streets. Probably you heard about them. And these streets, these are the only two streets which go from far north to far, to far south. Shari Salah al-Din, Salah al-Din Street, this is the one. And by the way, this, this street is older, older than the Israeli state. It's very, very, it, it, there is some, some like documents saying it's like uh, after Salah al-Din, like it was named as his name, like one of his sons probably or something like this. It's very, very old street, okay? And there's another street on the beach. It's called Ar-Rashid, Ar-Rashid. This is the one, okay? From far north to far south. Okay, I am concluding. So what happens in, in the 7th of October? 
you probably all know, okay? Um, the, the military group in, in Gaza, they went and went back to around 14 settlements. But do you know how many settlements around Gaza? Which is actually the, the whole Gaza before 1948. Now there's 55 settlements. So there are 55 settlements. There's some settlements like big settlements and some of them called kippots. Kippots like a small settlement for farmers, labor, and things like that. So what happens is actually they went into all places to around 14 big settlements. And if I go back to 2021, one of the resistant leaders said something. His name is Yahya Sinwa. I don't know if you heard about him. Now, now, now the Israelis is looking like they want to catch him. He said in 2021, watch our next step and keep this number in your mind. Four ones. One, 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 one. By the way, no one, no one knows what did he mean by this? No one at that time. Probably all people like me think, thought about it. Maybe it's, uh, hmm, maybe rockets. Maybe they will free prisoners, Palestinian prisoners. We don't really know. Until the fourth day of seventh, like probably around the 13th, I listened to someone in Gaza. His name is um, Saad al-Wahidi. He's an engineer. He's in Gaza. And he was doing a lecture. So I attended, I mean, I, I, I heard the recording of that lecture. And he said, what happens in 7th of October made me think that this is the 1111. There is a planning for the resistance movements to liberate the whole Gaza. And the planning started, started in the 7th, on the 7th of October. How they, it will end, we don't know. But this is what he meant by the 1111. And that's based on one source. But honestly, after that, after I heard it, I have asked, and it was like spread around in the social media, and lots of people said, yes, we, we don't have any like explanation. This is the explanation. They are planning since long time to liberate the whole Gaza as one state. So there is a project. And we ask Allah to protect them and soon to hear really good news. I'm, I'm, I'm like politically, I'm not a politician, I'm not, you know. The consequences, it's unlikely, right? But who knows? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the sustainer, and he is the most powerful. It will take some time, but this is what they meant by 1111. And I really, uh, um, like, I'm sure this is what he meant. Yeah. Okay? Now, as I said, that's what they try to do, but the consequences in the ground, what is happening is actually the Israeli army is, try, is, is, is like trying hard and, and there is like signs that lots of people, they moved down because they were not, not just like they bombed. They had no water, there is no food. There is no place to live in. It's on the ground, like their house is on the ground. So what they're trying to do is to move, transfer, roughly 1,200,000 from north and Gaza toward the middle area and Khan Yunus and Rafa. There are plannings, lots of talks about they want to get like a safe passage to Egypt, Sinai, we don't really know, but there's lots of you know, analysis about this. But there are still like thousands of people, they still in their homes, they didn't move. But some of them they don't have anything. Like they don't they don't have any place to live in, so they, they moved. And by the way, they even bombed those who are moving. Many times. Many times. So um, 
Um, just, just briefly, th there's lots of talk about tunnels, tunnels underground. Okay, and I'm, I'm not saying something secret. It's all in Google, it's all in Al Jazeera documentaries, and, and they're talking about tunnels. The tunnels discovered by the Israelis in 2000, up to, sorry, up to 2022, up to 2022, it was only seven tunnels. And you can see them here. Okay? And actually, the tunnel from Khan Yunus, they were like mad. How they made it, it's very long. But they don't know. Al Jazeera documentary, they put a documentary. Do you know Tamir al Ishaq? Like he, he, he made like a program called Nakhafi A'la. What is hidden is lit. It's even more. He said, and this, this like information, it was passed to him from the resistance. Okay? So it was like a, he was allowed to, to talk about this. He said there is more than 1,300 tunnels underground. So that was in the documentary on Al Jazeera channel. And these tunnels divided into three types. Attack which goes outside Gaza, it's probably being used to go to the settlements. Defense, which is in Gaza, and the defense one, you know how long it is? Like how, sorry, how, how the size of it? It's 500 kilometers. So there is a city bigger than Gaza, underground, okay? And that was like allowed, like you can find it in Google, it's not from, talk to me. They were like, and like they said this on Al Jazeera channel. And the Israeli thought that these tunnels is 20 meter depth. But what Al Jazeera documentary said, it's reaching 70 meter depth. And actually one of these tunnels, two levels. Not just one level, two levels. So there is a city underground. And yes, the battle will continue. The battle between the truth and the enemies of the truth, the liars. So Jazakumullah khairan. This is just one question for my kids here, anyone? Any, the, the, the youth? Anyone? Can you tell me where is the Masjid Al-Aqsa? Hmm. I like the picture when I went, like when I came, I found it. Where is Masjid Al-Aqsa? Which one? This one? This one? That one? Okay. Masjid al-Aqsa, Masjid al-Aqsa is all this. All in between the wall. That's Masjid al-Aqsa. Anywhere you pray, you are in the Masjid al-Aqsa. Masjid al-Aqsa, it's 144 acres. 144 acres. Okay, it's not, this is, this is since the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay, this is the Masjid al-Aqsa. Alright, and inside the Masjid al-Aqsa, there is more than 300 landmarks. More than 300 landmarks. Gates, domes. Mosques, actually, there is a musalla underground here called the Musalla al-Marwani. That's Marwan ibn Abdul Malik. He built it underground because Muslims were really big numbers at that time. And there is a musalla here also underground. Of course, like they, it's closed by the Israeli. This is Ha'at al-Burat, and and this is the west here. So this is this is west. This is east. All right, this is north and this is south. So the whole area is in Masjid al-Aqsa. This is only Musalla, Qubba al-Sakhra. This is al-Musalla al-Qibli. You can pray anywhere, but like the men, men like us, we usually go here. And for women, females, they go into Qubba al-Sakhra, like in the Jum'ah prayer, for example, right? 
Jazakumullah khairan. See you all, inshallah, soon there, bi'idhni Any questions, brothers? Any questions?